slides to really identify the area and go through the mining process, and then uh, Ms. Henderson will come up. Okay, this, um, what you see on the screen here is a slide showing the project area and its location. The Keystone Air Park is uh, immediately to the south. Um, Camp Landing is to the west. Uh, there are no public roads that front this, this, this site. We can go to the next slide. Um, this is a closer view of the site and what's, what's there today. It's predominantly forested and most is used for silviculture. It's another zoomed in of the area uh, of the site. Um, what you're seeing on the screen now is the current zoning uh, map. This area is in the A1 or Agriculture 1 zoning. Uh, within that zoning area, mining is used, is allowable by a special permit, which is the purpose of this uh, application. And this is a future land use map, also showing that the site is in an agricultural land use. Um, the next few slides just show in general the, the area of the proposed mining activity and those areas that would, would not be mined. The blue is the extent of mining, so that's the northerly extent there, and then uh, going south. There uh, some east-west and north-south corridors running through the property that would not be mined as well as uh, upland buffer areas between the, uh, transitioning between the mined area and the areas that are not mined. So the mining process here, this is a little different than what has taken place further north. For example, in Baker County, um, Comores and previously DuPont has, you may have seen a floating barge where there's a barge floating in a pond and the way they move the barge around is to move the pond. Um, and that m moves very slowly through the through the uh, through the area, and uh, they used a, a, a dredge to dredge up the sand material, and uh, from there it goes into a series of spiral separators and, and is then um, uh, processed. Um, with this system, so this would involve two uh, mobile mining units, where uh, the, where material would be um, excavated using mechanical equipment such as the, uh, the, the backhoe uh, excavator material that you have there and, and put into the mobile mining unit to uh, initially uh, break up the material into um, sands that can be slurried to a, a, uh, a mobile separator which would be located nearby. Um, it is transported between the mobile mining unit and the separator um, by by what's called a slurry, which is to suspend the uh, soil material in water. Uh, from there, the separator would separate the heavy minerals from the quartz sands. And then, really, that's the beginning of the reclamation process. The, the, uh, the quartz sands are then returned by, by a slurry um, back to the site to begin reclamation, where it's then dewatered and, uh, and uh, using bulldozers and other heavy mechanical equipment and guided with uh, data about the uh, just, uh, ultimate topography and restoration plan. They began shaping the land uh, for reclamation. So uh, this slide explains the average depth of the excavation is about 22 feet. Uh, I did want to say that before any of the excavation takes place, um, topsoil is set aside uh, and is used to contain stormwater. Um, as part of the reclamation process, many of the, the folks that are in the room today, they do a lot of the work here on the me mechanical side to um, put back the topsoil uh, when the excavation is complete. Um, so in summary, it's, the application uh, includes an area of 1,877 acres, of which about 886 acres would be mined. Um, there are about uh, 352.6 acres of wetlands impacts. Um, of that, I did want to say, and Ms. Henderson will go into it more, about 171 acres of those wetlands impacts are in active pine plantation. So uh, these are areas where it's in slash pine, uh, where the uh, typically is bedded rows. Um, the proposal is to reclaim and restore those sites as mixed forested wetlands. So removing the bedding and to, uh, and to really put back the, the vegetation the way it would have been before the uh, more active silviculture took place. So, um, and the wetlands will be restored and reclaimed acre for acre and type for type. Um, with that, um, if, unless you have any questions, Ms. Henderson is going to talk further about the wetlands reclamation process.